when you see a team like you did with SMU early in a season, four or five games in, and then they play another four or five games, they'll kind of evolve a little bit. I think they got beat over the weekend. So um, as you've looked at SMU post your game and have seen them since, anything changed much? Well, it's interesting. We've played three games since SMU and had a 10-day break. Uh, they've played two games. So they've even had more of a break uh, than we had after that game. And one of the games was at Hofstra where they had the – you know, the four players suspended. So that wasn't a real good gauge. That was a 30 point win, 40 point win and not much changed. And we were kind of eager to see what happened at Rhode Island because that was the longest break before they played. And they were in a, a close game until the end, you know, 30 minutes, it was really competitive. But, you know, um, Larry Brown's a little bit of a creature of habit, I think. So they've, you know, they're eight and two. And I, I think going into the Rhode Island game when you're eight and one, uh, I, I think it doesn't wouldn't make a whole lot of sense to change what they're doing because the formula that they had was was pretty productive for them. Um, but they ran into kind of a buzzsaw with Rhode Island. They put it together offensively, probably like they hadn't all year, and uh, and did a nice job. So we don't, as we talked about, SMU is a little bit like a conference opponent right now, where you can you can play a team twice and have a chance to make some adjustments. And you know we're not. Uh, maybe talking about personnel as much because our guys are familiar with what they're doing. And, you know, I still think at the end of the day, the SMU game is going to come down to, um, you know, getting some loose balls and making sure we're shoring up our defensive rebound, uh, which we didn't do at their place. And then we can't, we can't have the, the volume of turnovers that we've been dealing with lately. So hopefully we can we can start taking care of those two elements. The BYU game, you mentioned it stung a little, obviously, last time we talked to you. How's that changed, and have you been able to turn that around into a motivational thing, or has it been the motivational thing since the game ended? Well, I mean, I think when you have a game with with that much energy and emotion, and the crowd, and the rivalry, and and uh, and all those elements that took place, it was just kind of a natural hangover, you know, for us to a little bit of a letdown. We had a lot of games in a short period of time. I think we played six games in in uh, two weeks, going back to the holiday the. Thanksgiving tournament so we were grinding pretty hard and it was kind of the end of that stage of the season and it it hurt you know and it hurt Monday and it hurt a little less Tuesday and then it was really easy to get back in the saddle on Wednesday because it was you know far enough of a distant memory but I think we we learned some things about our team um, there were a couple of things that we were exposed to that hopefully we're better at next time around and that's kind of what the process is all about is you know, um, when things don't go your way, you figure out why they didn't, you fix them, and then you hope when they're presented the next time you're able to, to overcome that. So I think it was a learning experience for us, and it was, uh, you know, a great interstate game. And uh, right now I think we've got SMU and SMU and Northridge on our mind, and, and then, uh, then we can kind of digest everything over the holidays and, and start her over again.